deep within the rolling plains of Europa. The quiet strand beast can be found roaming the beaches. With no natural predators, it spends its days wandering up and down, seemingly unintelligent and devoid of thought. People occasionally claim to have seen this rare beast. Not just alone, but in herds. <clears throat> okay, silliness aside, today we're back looking at another entry for the Planets competition. And I guess we actually need to start with a really quick lesson, so let's cut this, and let's talk a little bit about a man called Theo Janssen, who is a Dutch, I don't know, half engineer, half artist? And back in 1995, he started making these things he refers to as Strandbest, or Beach Beasts, if you translate it from the Dutch. And what these are are really crazy engineered, kinetic-powered constructions. They're completely mechanical, and the idea is he's trying to create, in his mind at least, a new life form. These things roam the beaches, and most importantly, they demonstrate a really crazy idea of locomotion, based off these 11 magical lengths, that when you put them all together, you get this thing that actually behaves quite a lot like a wheel. So a really crazy advanced mechanical setup, hopefully you've got an idea from what I've been showing in the background of exactly how nuts these things are. So now let's get back to Space Engineers, and something that, from the moment I loaded the world up, legitimately had me just grinning in my chair. So, good job with that, if nothing else. Let's take a look at this nutcase contraption, and perhaps think a little about the mind of the man that put it together, because that's kind of scary. Made by Schubel, and probably the most crazy thing, the most nuts design I've seen in Space Engineers to date. I mean, just look at it, I don't know how many pistons and rotors are on there. A lot. I think there's 11 pistons per leg at the very least, and it's got 8 legs. So, that should kind of start to fill you in. Is it 8 legs or is it 8 legs? No, it's 8 legs aside, it's got 16 legs. So let's fill you in on a bit of what the hell is going on here. I'm going to do my best to try and explain it, and at the same time show off why it's so crazy. And the first thing you've got to do is have a look at these pistons. And you'll notice I said there was 11 of them, and that's because there are 11 sort of magical lengths for this design. And these pistons are not there for aesthetics. They are there to actually be set to really, really specific lengths. And when we look in the cockpit later, they are really specific. And it's really important because what this ends up doing is making this center line in front of us here stay completely stationary, even though if you look, it's attached to a whole bunch of stuff that's moving, and it's not powered itself. The only powered rotor in this entire design is this one. So the one in front of me there, you can see it kind of comes out and attaches onto one of the arms, and once all that's put together, you get a walking motion, and then you've got to repeat that with all of these legs. I hate to think how he put this together. I mean, just the logistics of building it must be nuts. And you can see each leg has got one powered rotor, and then the rest are all unpowered and it's all just working off this single point of rotation. So let's go down and actually make her walk, because this is the deal. So, might as well use his seat, because I quite like that. I also like, I never even thought of the fact that once you're in the seat, you don't count as a character anymore. So that sensor immediately turns off and lifts us back up again. Just cool. Got a couple of screens nicely positioned, and that is because if we hit nine now, we're in a little sort of parked mode, and basically this is because apparently the blueprint won't print, won't paste into the game unless the legs are in a really specific position. So you can see all these legs, they're kind of... You can imagine if we were to drop that down now, it's gonna fall over. You know, it's not gonna stand up right. So the whole sort of setup of this is we get in, we get the control, and the first thing we're gonna need to do is get out of this, like, park mode. So if I get us a nice point of view on the side here, get the lights on, and hit nine, you can see all the... It's crazy, this thing. I mean, look at it move. All the legs spread out into their walking positions, the pistons in the centre lift up, and then we're ready to go. And all I need to do now is press 2 and 3, the, in, the sides of the legs are independently controlled so that I can actually turn the bot around. So you can see I can go a bit that way, or I can stop it, let's bring it towards us. Let's bring that side round. I can also, if I wanted to, reverse this side legs to make it turn on the spot. Yeah, look at this thing, guys. And let's walk off. And I will do my best to try and explain how he's managed to achieve this, because there's a few special bits going on here that have been done to kind of work around space engineers rather than around this design, because not only is it crazy in real life, but space engineers, of course, had a couple of extra cogs to throw in the works. In this case, all to do with timing. 
But this is a kind of not an interesting subject to look at, I'm gonna leave some B-roll running in the background so you can at least look at this thing move a bit more. But the deal is, when you set timers off in Space Engineers and actions in timers and actions on rotors and so on, they don't all happen at the same time, and time doesn't necessarily flow consistently. It's all based on the sim speed and the fact that the game actually only processes one action at a time. So you end up with this one frame gap in between everything, which is really short. You know, one frame, 60 frames a second, it's a 60th of a second, it's really short. But it does end up with everything slowly desyncing. So Tubal actually wrote himself a script, and we can go and take a quick look at that, because actually it's the best way to describe what it's doing. So back to the main footage, and if we go and find the programming block, I also got something else I want to show you in here. So it is kind of relevant. There it is. And in here is his special program. And as it says, this code is designed to run every three seconds while the Strand Beast is walking, and it checks the current position of the drive rotor on each leg and adjusts their speed as necessary to keep them in sync with each other. Otherwise, this thing would end up very quickly walking in circles. So you can see he's even got him properly notated all the code, which is great. I guess it helps him remember what's going on. I can just about understand it thanks to his notation as well. I just think it's awesome that someone's gone this far to make this thing actually all function and get around some of the space engineers issues. And as you can see, it does a pretty blooming good job of walking in a straight line. It gets a little bit derpy if we speed up. I love these two independent speed counters as well, so you know how fast the two sides are going. Full speed, you can see it kind of tends to veer a little bit in one direction because the three seconds is perhaps even not quite quick enough, if you know what I mean. But it's still pretty damn amazing. So let's slow this back down to a sensible speed. Maybe they'll leave her kind of turning a bit. Slow that one down. Let's slow that one down even further. And speed this one up so we can just leave her kind of turning on the spot. There we go. I love this sort of crabby motion it does. It seems to work better if you leave the two engines kind of at the same speed, but it's not that bothered by it. So the final thing I wanted to show you that kind of is all about how it functions is all of these blooming pistons. And look how he's had to name them. It's, this must have been a nightmare to put together. But these distances here are so precise. It's so important what these numbers are. So 0.2833. You can be damn sure that's not just I dragged the bar and that's what it ended up as. These are really damn important. So as we go through, you can see they're all going to end up ooh, minimal distance, not quite right. They're all going to end up with like kind of really specific and I'm pretty damn certain if we go and find another B from a different piston, it'll be at the same distance as that one was. Yeah, 0.1933. So these are really important distances. I just love the level of detail he's gone in, that's gone into making this. We've got stopper for a second and get going. You can legitimately drive it. I've had a load of fun driving and messing around with it. It's worth taking into account. Because of how it moves, you can imagine those big weights on the two ends, they're there to keep it upright with how the whole motion of the craft works, especially once it starts either going quickly or kind of rotating. Once it starts turning, the two sides are kind of leaning in different directions at different times. If I speed up one of these, you can see it, sort of, it moves those two ends a bit more than it was before. So you kind of get an idea that without those, it was going to kind of fall over and with those, it kind of can't climb hills particularly well. Now, the strand beasts themselves were designed to be on the beaches, which is why I am where I am. Let's uh, see the other thing they were designed for. They were designed to be in herds. I wonder if I can, do you think I can copy and paste this while it's walking? That seems pretty dangerous, but not entirely certain the game's gonna particularly like this either, but let's see. Oh, she bounces, but she's good. So we can, we can have our herds of Strand Beast going, going across the beaches. The one at the back seems to be going a little bit faster. Strand Beast racing. It's a new sport. I love this thing, guys. I'm really just blown away by the fact that this thing actually works. Doesn't violently explode. I had it in multiplayer even briefly. When I was doing this recording, of course, I do some of it on my second machine. So while that's very low latency multiplayer, it's still multiplayer. So to some extent, it's going to work. Just perhaps don't go pacing it in across the Atlantic, for example. Oh no, the front one's going to crash. The real life ones also have some sort of collision avoidance technology. Somehow he's done that mechanically. Don't know how. And somehow Schubel has managed to make these things in Space Engineers. I don't know what more else I can add, guys. They're really damn cool. They seem to function nice and reliably. I cannot believe that they work. I cannot believe that these pistons aren't exploding, but hell, maybe Keen are improving it a bit. Or maybe this guy is just the genius that understands rotor displacement in a way that nobody else does. Who knows? In the end, they work. Clang is not here on this day. Um, oh, they're even going to take out trees in their path. Lovely. 
maybe maybe crop dusting. This is the new farming technique in Space Engineers. You just send these things out, they're clear areas for you. <laughs> I'm not gonna say hit like or anything on this video, guys. You're welcome to, but more importantly, go and check out this thing on the workshop. He's got 21 downloads on it, which is, I suppose, probably because people took one look at the pictures and went, sorry, what, why? That's too explosive. No, I don't think I'll take that, thank you. But they work. Go give him some love. Shubal on the workshop, links down below. And of course, this is one of the Planets Competitions videos. So this is one of the designs that you'll get to vote on once I've shown you all the spotlights. Hopefully you like it. I can see this one being a strong contender just because it's so unusual and so out there. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to check that stuff out. What a mad design. And I will catch you for the next one.